As you can see, the oil line's blown. There's oil everywhere. Let's fix it. So first up, we're just gonna turn off the rack. So turn off the toggle switches, the compressors. Just shut them down. You can hear it squirting out. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off all these caps, and we're gonna. Uh, yeah, we're gonna take off all these caps and we're gonna isolate it. Actually, we're gonna isolate it over here first. Because it's kind of, you know, somewhat of a high stress situation, you could say. You know, the whole like $100,000 worth of product on the system and blah, blah, blah. And the manager's all like, hey, don't do that. Yeah, anyway. It closes service valve, so that's the oil reservoir right there. Goes down the oil filter, comes out, goes down, and goes all the way down to the other. You know oil pot so what we're gonna do is we isolated it on one side so that's the in now this is the out the out the out the out so we're gonna isolate it on each out okay, you can see all four oil lines are now isolated so it's isolated on the in isolated on the out so unfortunately you know we don't need to pump it down or nothing because all the oil all the pressure is already bled off so we're gonna we're gonna crimp this and braze it and shut down the compressor okay so I isolated the suction and the discharge, so this compressor is isolated, oil, suction, discharge, isolated. Really quick, just wanted to mention, um, when I was isolating the compressor, I forgot to show. So you gotta isolate the suction, the discharge, and then this is actually the on-demand cooling right here, the vapor injection, or liquid injection, depending on what it is. Um, and I just wanted to clarify that because I have the tendency to use the wrong words for things. I know I do. And if you catch me doing it, comment below, because, you know, I don't like writing, and I don't like talking. Well, I like talking, I guess. I just don't talk right. We're going to try to squedge it and put on one of these um, nuts on it, see if it's the same size. If it's not, then we're just going to have to braise it and come back another day. Okay, so real quick, I'm just going to go over. So I wanted to get more footage of it, but my phone died, so anyway, so... Basically, I used a pair of pipe cutters, cut out the old one, okay, and then I flare tool, just, you know, normal flare tool off the internet, just used the flare tool to flare it, put on a flare nut, tightened it in there, okay? So, this is one that I got off of a, you know, like a mini split thing, we do mini splits sometimes uh, on the occasion, and uh, so you can see you probably could have got away with if you could have popped this guy out. You maybe could have used the same nut, but I don't know if I wanted to try to rethread it on because I was like, well, let's say this could be destroyed or it could be this. I just figured might as well replace it. I got one on my truck, so I replaced it. We're going to see if those threads hold. If they don't hold, we're going to have to crimp it and braise it, but I hope not. But so you can see right now we got a you know, 29 inch vacuum with 500 microns on there. Um, and you gotta be careful, you're gonna get oil in your gauges and you're gonna get a little bit of oil in your um, vacuum pump. It is what it is. Um, but you wanna, you know, blast it into the rack. When, I'll show you how to do that. Clear your gauges when you're done. But so as far as I can tell, this isn't, you know, this isn't leaking by in any way. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're going to just kind of crack it open, get some pressure to it once we get the appropriate vacuum. That I like and then uh, we're gonna see how it works. So the vacuum's holding fine so we're just gonna open it up there. This is the bottom of this oil reservoir. So I open that up just enough to get some pressure in there. I let the pressure settle because in an oil system when you're pulling the vacuum or putting pressure all the oil like settles. So you know it kind of like I don't know if that makes any sense but it will take a bit for it to reach the pressure it's actually at. So if you look at there, no leaks, no leaks. So, you know, this is generally 20 above suction. So it's at 50 right now, well, 30 right now. So suction's about 20. So yeah, we're pretty much as high pressure as we're gonna really be. I mean, it's gonna, I think it might get close to 50 sometimes. This rack might be a little bit more aggressive, but um, yeah, no leaks on there. So we're just gonna open it up all open just kind of leak checking again nothing there now I'm also just thought I would know that I'm gonna have to come back tomorrow and add another couple of gallons to the rack 
Uh, so I'll probably look at, you know, typically on those tags, they'll have how much oil your rack needs, like how many gallons, somewhere written on here. Um, you know, whether it took two gallons or five gallons or whatever, and you gotta kinda add it. But anyway, so we're gonna open all these up, and I'm also gonna unisolate the compressor. So the reason I isolated it was because I thought there was nothing else I could do. I thought I was just gonna be brazing it, and um, I was just gonna braze that guy, crimp it off, and then come back another day. And then I realized I had some flare, the flare tool, obviously, I knew I had that, but I, I realized I had some nuts that might work. So I just brought one up, tried it, saw if it fit, and I was like, yeah, this one's gonna do. So I was able to save it. So anyway, so I'm gonna open this all up because you like definitely stay and make sure this works with everything open. I'm sure it sounds peculiar, but let me tell you, when things are flowing, okay, and the compressors are on and things are vibrating, things behave differently. So just because it works now with a pressurized system doesn't mean it's gonna work with everything running. Look at right here, you see how this is broken off? I didn't know any better. I'd say someone tried to tighten this flare nut. Didn't know how to fix it. And tightened the heck out of it. And uh, and broke the and broke the flare. So I mean, you know, it happens. Probably a new guy, but that's my theory on what happened because <laughs> it was a pretty aggressive leak. Um, but so now I'm unisolating this compressor and I'm gonna open it up to the system and we'll stage everything on. Also make sure to unisolate, you know, the liquid side and the suction. Okay, real quick, just a brief overview. What's going on? So I just you know take a break so i understand what i'm doing so first off i valved it off over here so we got the oil filter just above the oil filter right we have this pressure that's coming in there you know let's say 50 psi from the oil reservoir up there right there's this valve right here i said okay valved it off now this 50 psi cannot go in there now if we follow this line of the compressors we have all these lines that go into each compressor all right i valved it off there 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 and there so every single compressor is now isolated that means the oil cannot get to the compressor so the in is isolated the outs isolated you can see from there to there and now it's just a piece of pipe nothing can enter or exit without my permission okay and that's when I took this off okay I'm gonna replace the flare fitting put it back on okay and then pull a vacuum at the port right on this oil filter I'm gonna pull a vacuum out of there okay so that's how I get the vacuum into this section of pipe now when I isolate the compressor I isolate the oil the discharge the suction and the demand cooling why because now this compressor is completely isolated from the rack okay that means that nothing can go in and out from the rack all these valves are off nothing can go in it nothing can affect it I isolated it from the rack okay oil discharge suction demand cooling okay that's what I did and I did that because I thought that I couldn't fix this so what I was going to originally do was I was going to braze this and then keep this isolated okay and open everything else up and have it run off of three compressors until I could come back and replace that segment of pipe with a new flare fitting but I had a flare fitting on my truck so I replaced it just wanted to take a step back show you this hopefully now it makes maybe a little bit more sense with the drawing and the video and everything yeah anyway back to the video okay so now with everything open okay still no leak still no leak okay so let's stage everything on now so now we're gonna go compressor one stage that on pulls in up let it run for a couple seconds compressor three let's pull in let it run on compressor three compressor four Flip it on, suck it in, let's let it run, on, and compress it to a piece of resistance, let's see, hopefully it'll suck it in, it might not, turn that on, alright, now let's see, is oil coming out of it, nope, seems to be alright, ah, the oil tracks isn't plugged in. I unplugged it, so we'll plug it back in and we'll see if this guy runs. There we go. Let's see. Nothing leaking. Nothing leaking. All right.
like that's not too bad. Now, in reality, you might want to figure out some way to secure this still. You know, I might have to come back and do some more work on this another day when I come to change out the oil. Um, but yeah, so that's how you repair that. That's how you do it. Obviously, for those of you who entered, I obviously tried tightening it originally. It, it was the player fitting was broken. So anyway, so I hope you learned something today. You know, uh, it's good to go. Uh, if you have any advice, comments, questions, concerns, whatever, put it in the comments below. Hopefully, this can be a place where people learn things. And uh, remember, I'm just some dude on the internet. So anyway, that's how you do it.